Mais oui, il dit que... God's real intention concerning marriage and family life. The fragile nature of our society today has placed in the minds of the youths a distorted image of what marriage and family life truly represents in our society. This is because many young people today find themselves in a condition of radical instability and look for, for help, for people to help them to answer the fundamental questions of life. And that answer is not forthcoming. So they face confusion every day, lack of understanding of what life really means. Today, there are different notions and understanding of marriage, especially among the youth, because of the fragile, confusing situation we find ourselves. Marriage is seen as a business which anyone can engage or disengage at any time. It's something that suits me. It suits me, it works for me, I go for it. If it not work for me, I disengage. Marriage among the youth of today is a thing of choice and contracts, which is suitable only when it serves their personal interest. When it is serving my personal interest, then it is okay for me. But if there is anything less than that, no, it is not work for me. I am not part of it. But commitment, sacrifice, and partnership of a whole life are far from their understanding of what marriage truly represents in society. They don't want that commitment. They don't want that ability to sacrifice, to partner for your whole life. They don't hear that. They don't value that. The fact remains that marriage is the basis of every human family and indeed the basic cell of every community. And if we do not get it right, we can never get our families right. If we fail to understand the true meaning of marriage and what it represents and the fruits of marriage in our society, we can never stand. And that is why society is falling. It's, you can see the breaking in, in, in communication and things that are going on in our society today because marriage is not well understood by the people. Now, everybody feels to define his own terms and condition of what marriage will be. Little wonder in our first reading today, we heard the Lord God say, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make a helmet for him. And in our gospel passage today, we heard how the Pharisees engaged Jesus on the notion of divorce in marriage and its controversy. Jesus referred them to the fundamental principle of marriage when he said to them, it was because you were so unteachable that Moses wrote this commandment to you. Why would he just say this? Because they came to him and presenting a situation that has occurred in the time of Moses when he had to issue a certificate just to make sure that there is peace in their camp. So for them, that should be the ideal thing. And Jesus corrected them. He said to them, from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. This is why a man must leave his father and mother and the two become one body, one flesh. 
That is the mystery of marriage. Two, becoming what? One. It's a mystery. And we must understand it. That when marriage occurs, you no longer one person in operation. It becomes what? Two in one. And we must know that. That's why in marriage, when we talk about divorce, he said, no, no. And Jesus made it very clear. The scripture says that when the disciples came in their private inner room, they begin to ask the Lord, need to clarify this for us. And he begins to explain to them. They are no longer two, but one body. So then, what God has joined together, man must not divide. And he said to them, the man who divorces his wife and marries another is guilty of adultery against her. And if a woman divorces his, her husband and marries another, she is guilty of divorce, adultery too. These things are very common in our society today. For some people, it's a business deal. It's working now, fine. If you don't work tomorrow, I disengage. Here, my brothers and sisters, Jesus emphasized on the real intention of God about marriage. The real intention of God about marriage is one man, one woman, becoming one flesh. One man, one woman, becoming what? One flesh for the sake of the what? Upbringing and companionship. Though there are two forms of life that help us to value human sexuality as a gift from God. These forms include marriage and what? Celibate life. These two are also in connection. When you become a celibate, you are married to the church. You are not a bachelor. And some people would think that a priest is a bachelor. He doesn't. You are married. You are married to the church. And that's why you understand the mystery of the church when the church uses what? The, 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 the female gender. Because that is how it is. So you are not a bachelor as a, as a, as a priest, a celibate. You are married to the church. Also, the same thing bounds with you, like a married person too, to committed for the well-being of the spouses. The same thing in marriage. So it's not about the free life or the way I want it or the way it should, will suit me best. We're going to understand that more as we go. So Jesus ruled out divorce by placing men and women on the same level. No longer could a man also divorce his wife. Because the Pharisees, in the time of Moses, is the man that we issue, the, the man we go to the tribunal, and the man will be the one to win. The woman have no say. But Jesus has put it the same way. If a man is guilty of this, if he does this, he's guilty. If a woman does that, he's guilty. So they are in the same penetra in relation to this very matter of marriage. But today, there are lots of problems in families due to lack of understanding of what marriage truly means. It is quite interesting to realize that social, economic, and political factors were major determinants that shapes the youth's present understanding of marriage, as we have seen in the youth, giving importance to changing trends in marriage life. Trends such as single parents. You hear people talking about, I would rather be single. I would be a single parent. I'm a single mother. I'm a single father. You know, something like that. Really in our society today. In the caste marriage, living in relationship or cohabiting. People are living in relationship and cohabiting. They don't care. They just keep on living like that. Nothing. No, no, no engagement. No, 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 no practical life in it. These are what we see in our society today. They will begin to talk about the ugly behavior, the, the abnormal ones, such as lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender marriages that we have in our society today. And people are proud to open their mouth and say this and promote it. That is evil. That is dangerous to human existence. Hence, marriage for them is more of a social phenomenon. 
then spiritual union and physical companionship does not matter for them. As long as it's good for me, it's good for you. Let's go on. But if there is any obstacle on the way that we need to fit together, that marriage is not possible. And that is why you find it very difficult for them to make right choices in the area of married life. They are not ready. They are not ready to understand and they are not ready to go through the rigorous preparation of marriage. All they want is the good aspect of marriage that they see, but the difficult aspect of it, they don't want. This ugly behavior must be corrected because marriage is such an valuable commodity if our society will grow, if our society will remain, marriage must be addressed. To understand what marriage truly means, we need to understand how the Holy Mother Church defines what marriage is. We need to understand it. And we can go through this when we reflect on the definition of marriage in Canon 1055. You can go and read it, but I will explain to you what Canon 1055 said about marriage. It states that marriage is a matrimonial covenant by which a man and a woman establish between themselves a partnership of their whole life and which is ordered by its nature to the good of the spouses and procreation and education of offspring has, by, has been raised by Christ the Lord to the dignity of a sacrament between the baptized. I will explain everything in this very definition. And if you understand what this definition means, and you go into marriage with this very understanding, my brothers and sisters, your marriage will be successful. That's what it takes to have what we call marriage, Christian marriage, or any marriage you want to talk about. The first, you see, it is a matrimonial covenant. There are seven items you need to point out in this definition. The first one, matrimonial covenant. Covenant means something that you cannot break. When you go into covenant, it's a different thing when you say contract, when you say union, when you say um, coming together, in any way you want to define it. It's not the same thing with covenant. When you have a covenant with somebody, you can't break that covenant. You know the other person has no power to break the covenant to have with each other. And that is why you understand the relationship between God and Israel. You see, I have a covenant with my people. Even though Israel keep on breaking the covenant, God has never changed his mind with what he has with them. Because that covenant is, is, a, is, is unbreakable. When you have covenant with God, who will now be the person to break the covenant? So marriage is a covenant. It's not a contract. That's why you see some people go to court. We have what they have, what they have in court is a, is a contract now. So we go tomorrow, we can go there and say, uh, uh, my Lord, I want to dissolve this marriage. Terms and condition met, yes, uh, marriage good. It's not in Catholic Christian marriage. In Christian marriage, there is a covenant. And that is what you do in the presence of God and his people. And you say, I, you mention your name. You, the wife, mention her name and say, I take you to be my what? Lovely wedded, for better, for, for, they don't want to say it in our generation now. They will tell me, Father, I don't mention for better, for worse. Let it be richer and richer. It can never be richer and richer because there's a moment of what? Difficulties. There will always be. You cannot remove difficulties in marriage and say you want to. Anything you do, even as a student, can you say you are a student that's no time for difficulties? No matter how rich your parents is, they will tell you with sweat. They will tell you with cry. They will tell you with feel pinch of being a student. That is what it is. So marriage is not a joke. It's not for our children. We're going to come to that. So a covenant you cannot break. Neither you, neither the, the other person can break it. And if it is well carried out and all the requirements met, nobody can break. There's no divorce in that marriage. There's no. As long as the impediments and there's no impediment before the marriage, 
You must know that. So if you are making your choice, you make a good choice for yourself. And you know there's no perfect thing. Pardon. You only walk towards perfection for yourself. Now, that is number one. The second one is it? It's between a man and a woman. It's not say between a boy and a woman, or between a girl and a man, or between two boys or two men or two women, or between a man and a tree, or between a man and a donkey, or between a man and a. He said, within a man and a woman, what makes somebody to be a man? Eh? What? Maturity. You can grow. If you are not mature, you are not a man yet. What makes you want to be a woman? Maturity. All the future that a woman has, a girl can have them. In potential. But it does not make that girl a woman. The girl becomes a woman when he becomes what? Mature. And it's that maturity that is lacking in us. When you are not mature psychologically, you are not mature physically, and you go into marriage, you will break. Maturity requires understanding, ability to harness Whatever comes your way, that's what a matured man is, a matured woman is. So marriage is not between a, a, a man and women, or between women and men, or the way you are defining it this way. You know, how many, many, many people, anyone that comes your way, marry tomorrow, divorce tomorrow, madness. Go and watch it. People that marry and divorce, they're going to divorce again, they're going to continue because they can never have peace until you say I want peace and work for peace. The next one says this man and woman establish between themselves partnership of their whole life. Partnership of their whole life. It doesn't mean you partner for the whole life. It's a lifetime journey. People don't know this. They don't think about this one. It is now that it's good for me that it works. It is, and which others by its nature to the good of the spouses. It is ordered by this very nature to the good of the spouses. It does not say the good of the spouse. You know why it does not say that? Because a man who is a spouse or a woman cannot say, I am marrying you for your own good. I am marrying him because of his own good. No, it is because of the good of both of us. My good and yours. We must understand that the marriage is for the good of the spouses. The other word, if you say, I marry this woman because of her own so I can provide for her, do everything, and forget your own self, you have not fulfilled the essence of marriage. Now, when you are now down, the woman is abandoned. Or when you now focus on your husband and abandon your own very self, what happened? The marriage is not balanced. The goal of the spouses must be talked about, must be looked after. It's the essence, and that is the goal of marriage. The good of what? The spouses. The good of the spouses. What works for us, what is good for you and for me. We must have this in our understanding of marriage. The next one says, procreation and education of what? Offspring. Today, people will tell you that I want to marry and I don't want to have children. In marital life, every conjugal relationship is open to what? Procreation and what? Education of the children. You must understand that. And that is why the church is against what? Contraceptives. And what we have, what we call natural family planning, which you must go through before you go into marriage. Brothers and sisters, Marriage is not a joke. It's not a joke. It's every day. Can somebody say, I want to build a house? And you just start building a house. Does somebody do not Nobody does it. You sit down, you plan, you draw it, you look at the soil, you test it, you look at your money, and every day you keep on building. Every day it takes you a whole lot. No matter how rich you are, you say you are building a house, you must, you must take part of you. You must take away something from you. If you don't look truly through it, they will build a monument for you that will just crash one day. And that's what marriage means. If people begin to build your marriage for you, they're very sorry. But very soon, that marriage will fall. You must learn to build your marriage yourself. And one thing that the last one says that when this marriage 
happen between two baptized persons, it becomes what? A sacrament. It is raised by Christ the Lord to the dignity of a sacrament. When two baptized persons engage in marriage, brothers and sisters, marriage is not a thing that we should talk about. Marriage is a serious business. And if you want to go into marriage, take your time. Search for one who is compatible with you. Begin to walk with one another. I will always say this. There is no perfect man in the way. And there is no perfect woman in the way. You will see this woman that is not compatible with this man. And this man has seen this woman as a bad person. The worst person you will see in this life. The woman turned out to be an angel when he encountered the other person. You know true? So that somebody has condemned you or labeled you that you are not good enough for her or for him does not mean that you yourself cannot be good and better for another person. That is why when somebody comes and says that I have not found somebody that is suitable and I say, you need to look at yourself. Maybe you are not suitable for marriage. Maybe the problem is yourself. Because you encounter people every day. People talk to you every day. You need to make the choices. You need to move the move. You don't just fold your hands and say, I am searching for a good wife. Are you a good man? I am searching for a good husband. Are you a good person yourself? If you are a good person, believe me, people will like good things. They will come for you. And when they come for you, are you open? Are you ready for the reality? That is what the Lord is teaching us. That marriage is actually the fundamental principle of our lives. It's good for us to reflect on what marriage stands for. If there are no good marriages, there can never be good society, good family. Anyway. To build a society, then we need to build a good family life. And to build a good family life, we need to build and have a wonderful, well-structured, marital life. Very important. And I ask you today, our daddies and mothers who have been in this marriage for some people five years, for some ten, for some twenty, fifty, even some persons. How far? What's easy? Huh? We are still in it. There is something we are missing that brings us to break away from our marital life. And this is what is happening in our society in most of us. And what is it? People remove God from their marriage. They remove God in who has actually united you together. Who has made it possible? Who has given you the grace to be, to carry out? Because you have forgotten that marriage is also a mission, a task, a vocation. It's just like a priest without God. Like a priest and you don't have God in your life. I pray for you. You are just a... I don't know what to, how to describe you. The same thing with marriage. In marriage without God is nothing. In the presence of God, you say, by His grace, I seek you to be my lovely whether it's husband or wife. That is what it is. You must make sure that God is in your marriage to guide you. And put into you the grace that is given to you in that marital life. And that's what's happening outside today. People remove God in their marriages. God is not the center of that marriage. And that is why you see people begin to determine, I want to do this, I want to do this, I want to see this kind of person. Want, have you asked God, what did you actually want? What did he want from you in this marriage that you have found yourself? There's some persons who are living. You have been with your husband, you have been with your wife five, ten years, twenty, and you are about to break up. Why would you do that? Have you talked to God about what is going on? Have you really determined to fix it? Brothers and sisters, the Lord Jesus is calling our patience, something very close to our lives. We must know that marriage is not a joke. And preparation of marriage comes in stages. Marriage preparation is not the day you want to come and meet the priest. I have found somebody I want to marry, and marriage preparation starts. How many months did that last? Six months, have you? For some people, three months. So you want to tell me that three months is enough for you to engage in the marital life that you have all your life, you're going to go into three. 
To prepare you for those certificates to be an engineer, it takes you five years. Is it not true? Five good years studying, mental structure, putting you in different lives and walks of life so that you can fit in and have mental capacity to be an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer. But now you're talking about marriage. And in that marriage, you have three months and some people six months and you don't even prepare for it. You just come to the field like that. But I'm here, Mark President, not Mark and go. And the next thing, marriage happens, six months, you're going to fail. Now the situation comes, you cannot handle it because you are never a professional in that marriage. That is what is happening in our world today. Oh, I'm in abroad. My husband is in abroad. But can you do the marriage course online? Your marriage will be online. And very soon, the divorce will also be online. Somebody you have not encountered, somebody you have not been with, you have not, you have not, you have not grown together, and you say, come and do marriage. Brothers and sisters, we have to be very serious. But to understand what marriage is, marriage preparation begins right from remote preparation. That's why we have stages of preparation. First one, remote preparation. The second one, proximate preparation. And you have the immediate preparation. The remote preparation is when children are growing. As they are growing, they watch you and your husband talking to each other, fighting and quarreling. They learn that in marriage, they fight and quarrel. Mommy slap daddy, daddy slap mommy. That's what you are teaching them. Tomorrow you go to set home fight when they grow. Because your son will know that when mommy talks, slap her and keep quiet. Because you are that's what you are doing. So you start teaching your children at the remote preparation. How you handle your husband, how you handle your wife. In their presence, they look at you, they learn. That is where marriage starts. Vocation starts from there. My mommy has never been beaten up by my dad, and I will not beat you. I've seen a man say that. I'm not beating my wife because I've never seen my dad beat my mother. Is it not the same in our society here? Then we talk about the, 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 the proximate preparation. When you are now a youth, when you have grown up, you begin to plan yourself. You begin to have friends, people you encounter. You build yourself in that very aspect of marriage. So when you are now ready, you are now matured enough to make choices. You are not a matured man. You are not a matured woman to marry. Then you will see your balance. You pick somebody. But if you don't get this right, you cannot pick the right person. You cannot make right choices because you have failed in remote preparation, you have failed in proximate preparation, and you want to be perfect in immediate preparation. It cannot work that way. Today, the Lord is teaching us something. Let us begin to groom our children. Let us begin to groom ourselves for marriage and vocation. The same thing with priesthood. If you are not well prepared in remote preparation, if you are not well prepared in proximate preparation, you cannot be a good priest. You cannot. So parents, children need to be formed. Children need to be groomed for their vocation. And it's your responsibility. It's your task. That's why they say procreation and what? Education of offspring is your responsibility to procreate and to do what? Educate them. Education is not only when you send them to school and pay good amount of money. It's to teach them family background, roots, essence of existence, human life, culture, and tradition. Nobody will teach your children that exception. And if you fail, you are failed. That is part of marriage. Dear friends, we are having issues in marital life because we have chosen to abandon God in our lives. We feel that God is so rich. So we want to eliminate him from our activities. Thus, we have abandoned God and divorced him, like the people of Israel, by trusting on our own power and ability which he has given us. We fail because we have abandoned God. Yet, God still remembers the covenant he made with us. He is not ashamed to identify with us. We come back to him today to make the right choice. All he wants is for us to come back to him now that we are still alive. For he is a merciful and faithful husband who loves us as his bride. So today, we are called to embrace the will of God and this and his teaching concerning family life and the issue of divorce, which says there is no divorce, make the right choice, build together, 
to give one another, love one another, care for one another, work together for the well-being of the spouses. We should not let the trend idea of distorted personality in our society mislead us. Because that's what we see. When some person begin, a man begins to behave like a woman, and a woman begins to behave like a man, is it a normal? It's not normal. And people begin to think that this is normal. It's not normal. A man is a man, a woman is a woman. When a man begins to behave a woman, it's like a sick person. A sick man, and it's not, a, it's not, it's not normal. In our society today, it has become normal. Something that is not normal has become normal. It's becoming normal in our society. You are a man. You are a woman. It's a message God created you that way. A special creature for that matter. As a man, you are a special creature. As a woman, you are even more special. Because he said that the man slept and he did what carefully made the woman because of what she represents. Mother. Mother. So women, please, let us respect ourselves. Let us value who we are. That's why it pains me when I see women being treated like dogs and they claim to be dogs. Watch all this, our uh, uh, movie and music, and the woman is moving like a dog and they are moving and you wear rubbish and they are moving around and they are treating you. Because you don't know who you are as a woman. The value of a woman is not imaginable. The women have lost it. They see themselves as a commodity. And if you are a commodity, you, you are purchased by like a commodity and treated like a commodity. But if you are a valuable vessel, then you will be bound, always. Which one are you? A commodity or valuable asset? Whatever you make yourself, that is what you will be. The Lord is calling us to make ourselves wonderful assets. Right? Let us value and respect the sanctity of marriage. And I pray as we do so, may the Lord help us. I know it's not easy, and it can never be easy to be in marriage. Anybody that will explain this to you, I don't know how he's going to explain it to you, but I will tell you as a priest, it can never be easy to be in marriage. You must make sacrifices. You must tolerate one another. You must accommodate one another. Sacrifice is what makes marriage work. Without sacrifice, there is no marriage. Without forgiveness, there is no marriage. Without love, there is no marriage. Don't throw this in away. Hold them and I shall see. And sometimes when you die, turn them into place. May God help us through Christ our Lord.